Alrighty, welcome to uh, another episode of the Good People Beer Club. Uh, I'm Morgan Snyder, and today I'm here with Sean McCain from Bronx Brewery. How we doing? We're, uh, we're going to sit here and uh, talk a little bit about Bronx Brewery, where they got started, uh, what they're doing now, and uh, you know, get to know a little bit more about the brand and all that, all right that on. stuff. Um, so I guess go ahead and start telling us about a little bit about yourself, where what you do at Bronx, and um, well, how you kind of got started there. I'm a, it's a great question, you know, I mean, I, and I'm sure people want to know where, where exactly, but no, I, I, uh, I'm a sales director for the Bronx Brewery. There's three people that are in our team. We've got Chris Gallant and Damian Brown are the two uh, managing partners, and then I'm a, I'm a sales director and also a partner as well. Bronx Brewery started in September of 2011 selling beer, and it was pretty much Damian and Chris right. uh, self-distributing. And uh, really the way to start. Yeah, and making one beer, Bronx Pale Ale. Cheers. Yeah. Uh, that we uh, we wanted to focus on because, well, basically, we love pale ales. Yeah, and, and America has a huge obsession with pale ales, so it kind of seemed the perfect place to start. Exactly, and you know, I mean, we're we're big believers of doing one thing and doing it right. So if we're gonna make a product, we want to make sure that it's something that's gonna be consistent. Mm. It's balanced. Yep. Uh, but still has our personality in it. So we have, this is what uh, Damien came up with. It's a 6.3% American pale ale. We use uh, West Coast hops, Cascade and Centennial. So we get a little bit of pine citrus in the nose for the aromatic. Yep. Um, and then we use a lot of English malts, the most prevalent one being Maris Otter. Yeah, which but, is a fantastic malt if you've ever... Yeah, I like, like using it all the time in homebrew. It's absolutely, fantastic. like a good maltiness, yeah, uh, biscuity, like very biscuity kind of like, sweet. Yeah, but we want to make sure that we're not overdoing that. We don't want it to be cloying. It's all about balance. Yep. Right. And, so, and, and it's you can really tell when you actually take a sip. Like that's that there's nothing that really kind of actually takes control of the beer. Yep. You, you get all the hop aromas and you get a lot of the sweetness. Um, so it's a really good, well-rounded beer. Absolutely. I mean, it's a, it's a nice little voyage as far as beer mm-hmm. goes. We've got the aromatic, we got the bitterness. It's not too bitter. Right. Um, it's a 50 IBUs, and then you get the malty, biscuity, sweetness, and then the dry finish. Yeah. Rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. <laughs> rinse, repeat. It, yeah. You know? And it's, it's really good. And um, you guys are actually also kind of doing almost one-offs as well, which is kind well, of we, fun. Yeah, so what we do is we do uh, the flagship, the pale ale, that's always available, and then we'll do a specialty seasonal. So right now it's the Belgian pale ale. And the Belgian pale ale, which uh, you will be able to enjoy at Beer Authority very soon. Um, which is where we are, by the way. Yeah, this is the one year anniversary of Beer Authority. It's wow. pretty, pretty freaking awesome. It's only been a year? One year. Wow. It's been a labor of love, too, I mean, this place is awesome. Yeah, um, it's fantastic. But yeah, continue. <laughs> Uh, but so, so the Belgian pale ale is uh, 6.7%. We use two Belgian Trappist yeast, a Belgian pale yeast, Belgian candied sugar, mm-hmm. uh, single hop, uh, sterling. Right. So the American version of the sauce. Uh, Vienna Pilsner is the base malt, a couple of other malts as well, unfiltered, nice phenolic nose, a little yeah. bubblegum, uh, citrus tangerine at the front. Yeah, very, very, lots of very tropical fruits coming through in that. Yeah, very, very citrusy, uh, a little bit of heat. And then mask completely. Right, right. It's just by kind the of there, uh, but, yeah. by the sterling and the, and the whole balance. So it's a uh, it's pretty it's pretty awesome beer, man. We're we're really excited about it. It's, it's done well so far. In three weeks that we've had it, we yeah. keep running out of it right when we get the next batch in. Yeah, no, I actually was I that's was good. really looking forward to it because I went to the lunch and it was fantastic, and I was like, like that's what I really wanted to drink tonight. No offense yeah. to the pale, but I wanted to drink the Belgian and talk Absolutely. About it. Well, me too. You know, uh, but. Um, can't win them all. Tomorrow at the Blue Point Cast Festival, we'll have a firkin of the Belgian and a firkin of the spiced with peppercorn. So we infuse that with red, black, and green peppercorns. Uh-huh. So that'll be fun. Nice little side by side of that beer. Yeah, I wanted to go to that, but I kind of unfortunately double booked myself on that one. So I, I had to pass up on the Cast Festival. Sometimes, um, sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, you just can't hit every beer festival. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, that's not my problem. I, I, I seem to hit them all. It's, it's, this is actually the first time I've run into that problem, but we digress. Yeah. Um, I, another really exciting thing is you guys just launched your cans. Yeah, last Thursday. It was, it was last Thursday? Last Thursday uh, was the first day that we sold it. We didn't really promote it at all. Didn't tell the distributors too much about it. Um, it's the pale ale. And we're, uh, man, I'll tell you what, it's, it's gangbusters. It's in a 16 ounce can. 
It's four, the can is beautiful. I'll, I'll see if I can't put an image up for you guys to see it. But I, I should have brought one. I, uh, now that I think about I, it, I actually have plenty of pictures from from the one you gave me. Good. So Good. I have so I have lots of elegantly taken pictures of it. Good. <laughs> Yeah, um, it, and it, 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 it's really done well, you know, and, yeah. and we're, we're brewing that out of City Brewing in La Crosse, Wisconsin. Right. Uh, we made that choice as far as, like, to be able to build out our new brewery. So our new brewery is going to be open in the fall in a right. um, 20-barrel system, canning line, barrel aging program, tasting room, the whole nine yards. But we needed to find a partner to be able to get ourselves out in the market. Right, right, right. So we do the Pale Ale um, out of Smith City. Which, which has been a great relationship so far. We're, we're super, super stoked with the product. Yeah, well, there's a, it's funny. There's actually been kind of a trend of like these uh, these canning operations that are opening up, and they're not yeah. they're not making beer. They're actually just really can't going around and helping craft breweries can their beer. Yeah, and it's a great thing. And, and I, I personally am very, I'm, I'm on that canning wagon. I love. Can beers. I, um, it's a mini keg. No light hits it. Yeah. You know what I mean. You, you, and I, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and say this on on tape on the record. I think Bronx Pale in the can better than the draft. Whoa. Uh, yeah. On the record. It, it is wow. Right now. It, I, it, it does have a really nice malty. The, the flavor of yeah. the malt comes and the out. Hops, the hops almost come through like like it's just. You, it's I, amazing. I'm with you, man. I, the first time, the first can that I opened was Chris, Damien, and I. We were like, all right. Yeah. So we got 3,600 <laughs> cases of this. So. Oh, God. Ooh, smells good. Yeah. <laughs> we all looked at each other like, good life decision. <laughs> nice. And actually, uh, I'm, a big fan, I'm a big fan of decanting any beer. You know, I, right, I, I yeah. figure the bottle, the can, the keg, whatever that is. It's a vessel right. for me to pour it into a glass. I mean, you're preaching to the choir right here. I, I do the same exact thing. At this point, my glassware collection is is almost disturbing yeah. how extensive it is. I'm one of those guys who has a glass for every single style. Not on purpose. It just kind of it happens. happens. That, that happened to me too. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, drinking the Bronx out of the can, awesome. I haven't. I haven't had the opportunity to do try it. that. Yeah. Do it. I mean, you don't. You don't lose anything. Because we're not, it's not an overly hoppy beer. Uh-huh. Um, although it has aggressive hops with it, yeah, like a lot of high alpha hops, Cascade and Centennial. Um, it, it it really works well. I, I was pleasantly surprised, and for the last seven days, I've been more pleasantly surprised. <laughs> drinking it out of the can when I find I have to. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you mentioned that you're, you're just now opening up a brewery. That, that obviously implies that you haven't been brewing out of your own facility. No, we started brewing out of Cottrell Brewing in Pocatuck, Connecticut. Right. Uh, they're famous for their Mystic Bay IPA. Um, I can't say I've ever run into it. Now it's something else. It's a regional beer more, more in New England. That makes sense. But they have a 40-barrel system. We bought a 40-barrel and an 80-barrel fermenter. We use their kitchen. We source all of our own material. And Damien goes there, and that's where he does all of his work. Cool, so cool. that's where all of our specialties will continue to be done, and okay. then once the new, once our new place in Port Morris goes, then that all will be shifted to. So uh, you're actually going to do all all the brewing in in this new facility. All the specialty beer. Okay. The, the pale ale will continue to contract out because because that's a way for us to get maximum exposure, right. be able to can it, and frankly, I mean, it's, the beer is phenomenal in the yeah. can. So, yeah. I mean, it'd be one thing if, if and contract brews come a very, very long way. Yeah. You and it, well, it's, it's definitely very hard, especially in the New York market, to really hit the demand in, you and can't be do able it. to afford the amount of equipment it costs. Well, you know, like, like, I'll give you a good example. So, we got in Madison Square Garden last year, and October, November, December, they did really, really well for us. We didn't know. We had no expectations on how much beer they were going to sell. And then we launched Brooklyn in like Jan- second week of January. Yeah. Madison Square Garden took 60 kegs, 40 kegs, and 40 kegs in 10 day period. That's the whole fucking batch, people. Yeah, yeah. That's 140 half barrels that are that, are, that just went out. So we, we basically, um, the, luckily our, our, our city brewing batch was coming in, but there's no way that we can sustain right. what we want to be is basically the pale ale. Uh, that, 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 was, that was a 40, 40 barrel batch, right? Yeah. There. Yeah. That's it. Done. So I mean like I, I know even even um Brooklyn who uh started in the eighties is they're still actually brewing out of uh, yeah, out of yeah. yeah. So Absolutely. it's 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 just 
in this market, it's just too, you have can't to. afford the huge production facilities that a lot of the other breweries are doing. Well, the real estate itself, I mean, the brewery yeah. that we're building is rather expensive. We've you know, gone through a couple of, of, of private funding. This is, our, this is our, we got our money on the line, yeah. you know I mean? And that's all because of the decisions that you know, Chris and Damien made. And God bless them. Yeah, God bless them. They're, they're doing something right. So. We, I think we are. I think we are. Yeah. So, uh, if you're in the New York area, definitely come check out some Bronx Brewery. Uh, the pale ale's fantastic. If you can get any of their special ales, I highly recommend them. We have the black pale uh, just coming out of That's just coming to the end of the black we pale. We got the pale ale now. That'll be yeah. available through June. Okay. And then uh, the next beer that we have is the Bronx Summer. We've, we're, we're actually going through that, uh, doing test batches right now. Yeah, what, what, what are you brewing, uh, if you don't mind me peeking the night? You know, it's all about what... Like, pull away. It's going to be, uh, uh, we want to make it a sessionable pale ale. Uh-huh. It's going to be between like 4, 4, 4, 5. So it's like a mini pale. It's a, yeah, a special, special bitter. Yes. <laughs> well, we thought about calling it the Bronx Bitter. That didn't, no. I don't think people want a Bronx Bitter. I do like the alliteration, but I, I don't... I do too. I, don't, I, I do too, but nobody else does. Yeah. So wow. then we were trying to figure it out, but we're using an, an experimental hop uh, that's very lemony. Oh, very cool. Um, and uh, uh, is it one of those XJK say, 725? Yeah, 089 HJK. <laughs> exactly. Is that is that the actual name? Or no, no. no. <laughs> we'll leave that to Damien to, 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 yeah, yeah. to he, fact he, check he that. He knows and he, he's got all that. Yeah. He's actually probably watching this. It's actually <laughs> like, 1175. Uh, exactly. Um, but then we're using a little bit of lemon rind uh-huh. as well, so it's going to be very citrusy, light, sessionable. It's going to be called the Bronx Summer. So cool. in mid to late June, enjoy a Bronx Summer, and then in August, enjoy a Bronx Ride. The ride right. comes back. Oh shit! And all of our barrel aging shit comes out there I'm too. I'm so excited for that. You, we still got to talk about that bourbon barrel. One. Well, we, we have a. The next one's going to be we're aging it in a Corsair gin barrels that used to be uh-huh. rum barrels, oh, so wow. they're oak. That should be out in the next month. That's exciting. And then we just loaded up six uh, six big ass French oak casks from Scorpio Mezcal. Oh, we okay. the black in. Nice. And then uh, next fall we have our Whistle Pig Rye. We've got uh, we'll have the, our rye's been sitting in that since October. So it'll be a rye on rye. You just got me really excited. Yeah. <laughs> and we got Brooklyn Wineries, Pinot Noir coming out. Uh, yep. bunch, a bunch of fun stuff, and we're going to keep doing a lot of barrel aging. I like it. We I love like it. it. Um, so I, we, we've gone on, we've talked about it, uh, so I guess Drink the, it. the only thing next to do is just enjoy a good Bronx. Um, so remember, wherever there's good beer, there's good people. Good people, good beer. <laughs> Cheers.